Hi, I'm Dr. Parijat Kumar. Welcome to our next virtual lab on evidence-based lumbar spine assessment. I hope you all enjoyed our today's lab and learned something useful. Welcome to our post lab quiz on lumbar spine assessment. We are going to discuss the answers for our today's virtual lab on lumbar spine. So here we go. The first question was, which of the following ligament pre-stresses the disc? Guys, I have a spine here with me. So the disc is generally protrusion is posteriorly. So the question asks that which ligament particularly stresses the disc? So in flexion, when you do a flexion, ligamentum flavum, which is the fourth option, particularly stresses, pre-stresses the disc. So if you see the other ligaments, there could be a posterior longitudinal ligament or the supraspinous ligament, but ligamentum flavum particularly pre-stresses the disc when especially you're going into lumbar flexion. All right, so I know we don't have a lumbar flexion here, but uh, this is the ligament that particularly stresses the disc in the spine. All right, so the next question was, which is not the function of thoracolumbar fascia? If you see again spine over here, your thoracolumbar fascia is connected over here. So the one of the function of thoracolumbar fascia is not the side bending of your vertebrae. So it, it does not prevent the side bending of the lower lumbar vertebrae. So that's not the function of the thoracolumbar fascia and the rest of the functions are the thoracolumbar fascia actions. Okay. So like it prevents the dorsal displacement of the back muscles, attaching the transverse abdominus muscle along with the internal obliques and anchor to the spinous processes to the isla. All right. Next question, what is the direction of superior articular facet of lumbar vertebrae? Again, I'm going to show it on the spine. It can be confusing, but if you see carefully, I don't have a single spine segment, but if you see the superior, if you see carefully over here, the superior facet of lumbar spine is actually faced posteromedially. So it's like this, posteromedially, it's like towards me. Oops, sorry. <laughs> so it's like towards me, posteromedially. Superior facet of lumbar vertebrae is facing posteromedially. So that's the correct answer. Next question, how would you explain the right rotation of L4, L5? If you, see, if you know the arthrokinematics or the biomechanics, this is a very important and as Dr. TJ and me explain about the Fright's law and the arthrokinematics, the rotation is actually movement of L4 down and back on L5. So the rotation will be L4 rotating on L5 down and back. That is the correct answer. That is option two. Next question was very similar. How will you explain the left side bending of L3 and L4? So if you see the Fried's type two dysfunction or the second law, you will see that the side bending and the rotation occurs to the same side. Okay, so in here also the movement of L3 will be down and back on L4 on the left side. So we are particularly asking about the left side bending. So left side bending. So movement of L3 will be down and back on the L4. All right. Next question. How will you explain the pain with extension, right side bending and left rotation on L4 and L5? So if you remember the Fright's law again, this is not an opening or a closing dysfunction. This is actually a facet impingement of L4, L5 guys. So this is called a facet impingement where you can do the manipulations and it really helps to open the joint and the facets quickly. Next question, which lumbar sacral root syndromes are actually affected in the sensory loss of the lateral foot and the lateral glute gluteal regions? If you know your dermatomes and your myotomes, the correct answer to this is S1. The sacral first nerve root is involved in the lateral foot and the lateral gluteal area. So S1 is the correct answer. Next question on a motor learning exercise, what does bent knee fallout signify? Bent knee fallout is a 
very evidence-based exercise and actually signifies both of your trunk strength and the motor control so your obliques are required in order to do a proper because we just see that it's not actually the hip motor control it's actually the trunk motor control and the strength that's why people who are neurological patients or stroke or any kind of a patient if you see their their legs are fallen out all the time and we keep on training the adductors and the hip muscles that's not exactly correct you need to actually train the trunk strength and the muscles too to prevent that bent uh, the fallout of the leg so this is a very good exercise for lumbar spine and the core training so the correct answer is trunk strength and motor control the next question was it is a case study a patient is a 43 year old female presenting with a pain in the posterior thigh region and the perineal region with myotomal weakness of the bladder now this is a red flag over here it should alarm you that there is a myotomal weakness of the bladder you should ask your patients about the bowel in the bladder okay and the reflexes were found to be normal i know many of us don't check them really so you need to know if the bowel and the bladder are affected what kind of or what areas of the nerve roots would be affected if you know these are s2 to s3 and s4 so s2 to s4 is generally your micturition reflex that is the area of myotomal weakness of your bladder as well as bowel i hope nobody did the cervical one <laughs> So the next question was the patient showed a segmental restriction with extension, right side bending and right rotation with L5 S1. What dysfunction are you suspecting? So when there is an extension, rotation and side bending, you suspect a closing dysfunction of L5 over S1. So these are opening and closing dysfunction that you need to really assess and then start with the treatment because we find quick results when we are treating these dysfunctions. So uh, correct answer is closing dysfunction of L5 over S1. Next question guys, these are the bonus questions from our previous labs. Uh, because if you don't, because this is like a regional interdependence chain, if you don't correct one thing, the other thing will not be fixed. So this is a question on our pelvis lab that we took last time. The patient is a 31 year old female presenting with a pain in the sacral region. The findings are the right sacral base is deep. The left sitting flexion test is positive. The left standing flexion is positive and it clearly, clearly tells me that this is a torsion thing. So what kind of torsion it is? It is a left on right. Yes, that is a left on right torsion. The correct answer is left on right, which is a sacral on the oblique axis, left on right. The last bonus question is from our shoulder lab that we did last, uh, last to last weekend. Uh, which of the following is not a finding of the anterior glide medial rotation syndrome in the shoulder? So this is a question for the shoulder. This is a very common uh, syndrome that you find in the shoulder patients. The correct answer to this is the proximal humerus is posterior to distal humerus. That's not correct. So you don't find this in the AGMR syndrome of the shoulder. So the correct answer is proximal humerus is actually anterior to the distal humerus. Okay. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's quiz and the lab. I understand it was a bit difficult. If you secured passing marks 7 out of 12 or more, you will get your certificates on your email within 24 to 48 hours to learn more evidence-based material, knowledge, manual therapy and videos. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on other social media like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn and Twitter. Keep learning and improving lives. Thank you. This is Dr. Parijat, Director of International Sports and Orthopedic Manual Therapy.